Hey folks, thanks for tuning in. This is Brian Stockard and it's all about motivation for transformation and with his message, as I said before, if you let him, he will help you do it. And I thought I'd come today and talk to you about this little thing that we have going on in our life because I find it interesting that, you know, I think about it a lot that when we have a problem, we can trust someone to fix it. For example, when it comes to our cars, when it comes to something that belongs to us, when it comes to like a computer, like for example, this computer right here, if it breaks down, if it's not working, we had no problem taking it to a complete stranger and putting our trust that they will fix that problem. We had no problem. If it takes them a day to work on our car, we have no problem. Go a week, whatever. Of course, we may want it back sooner than that, but hey, if they, they can fix it, we can trust them to do it. If I take this laptop over to a computer shop, they have no problem. I have no problem leaving it behind. But when it comes to problems in our life, things we're dealing with, have you ever noticed for yourself? I want you to think about this. Can you actually trust God as you say? Can you say, because I mean, I said it many times myself in the past. God, I trust you 100% to help me with this situation. And then suddenly, no, I got to deal with it myself. And so the topic is, don't take it from his hand. Don't take it back. That's the subject. Don't take it back from his hand. Because when we say, I'm going to put this problem in your hand, Lord, I ask that you fix it. And But I don't want to go, nah, nah. you don't know what you're going to do. I'll have to deal with it myself. But if I really thought about it, I wouldn't be asking him to begin with because I've been trying to fix it and fix it and fix it and I can't do it. And really, I have to take it to him. He, I know he can do it. But for some reason, why can't I trust him? So ask yourself, why can't you fully trust him like you said? Because if you really fully trust him, you could leave that problem. Whether it's like you're trying to deal with an addiction, you're trying to deal with a problem in the family, you're trying to deal with a problem in the church, you're trying to deal with sickness, you're trying to deal with some kind of situation like at job, at your work, whatever it could be. We pray, like say, God, I have this problem, I'm trying to, I'm not sure how to take care of it. Can you guide me? Can you lead me? Can you show me? God, I'm having a, I know, recognize that I have a problem with this. Can you help me overcome it? Can you help me break the habit? Can you help me? And those are many of the things we could probably ask him. We have to, we, and he just said, well, if you trust me, let me help you. And so he's asking me, put your problem in my hand. And now all we got to do is put it in there and let it go. And let him deal with it. Let him work on it. And let him instruct you. And I will tell you this. Because he will give you answers. He will show you ways. And you might find that is not what you're expecting. And I know that can be scary. Because, yeah, we have to do some of the work ourselves. We have to do it. But we need his instruction. And you might find that it's not going to be what we expect. But don't think of it as, well, this is too hard. But God, he would never give you things you can't handle. He wouldn't give you an instruction you didn't think you can do. If he believes you can, he would instruct you to do it. Because he knows you can do it. And know this. You're not alone at it. He's still with you. He's not going to send you on your way all by yourself. He's going to lie. He's going to guide you. He's going to be there to shine the light for you. And that when you do it as he has instruction, you'll be so pleased. You'll be so grateful. You'll be so thankful. 
and it probably won't be a quick fix. It will take time. But trust him. Keep it in his hand. Don't take it back. Keep it in his hand. In order for you to break it, you have to do it his way. And I tell you, because as an example, I had a problem with Oreos cooking. I love Oreos cooking. I I mean, I may be small, but hey, I get them on them big packets, rip it open, and right there, I'm dipping in milk, and I'm, I'm, I'm popping a little. I loved it. And by within not low time, I had gone through the whole package. Right there in one sitting. I would eat the whole thing. And I would have tell myself, well, it isn't a problem, but really it is. Every time I would go get some, bring it home, or rip it open. And then one day, God told me this. I heard it so clearly. He said, I brought home a packet. Sat it down. I was ready to rip it open. And he said, hold it. Hold it. And I, what? What? Don't have one cookie for 24 hours. I go, what? That's a, that's a long time. I bought it to eat it now. I, I want it now. But he said, don't eat one cookie for one whole day. 24 hours. And this is an example of fasting. To be without. It doesn't mean that I can't eat any food. He just doesn't want me to have one one cookie so I set that one cookie so I set the whole package to the side and I thought about it I really like oh man just want can't I okay but I'm gonna try it his way I'm gonna listen I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it I, and so I put my focus on other thing like I went to read the word I also went looking for other foods oh I, there's an apple in there. <laughs> so I'll eat on that. <laughs> it, that. That helped a little. It distracted me from looking at the cookies. Now, when I first started, the 24 hours started around, around 4.30 p.m. that day. And by the next day, it was 4.30, I had done so much dust that I saw the cookies and I was, eh, I'll wait. I'm not really wanting it right now. That it wasn't until the second day. Somewhere in the afternoon, early afternoon, about 2.30, maybe, 2, 3, something like that. I suddenly said, oh, the 24 hours up, I can have a cookie now. I can have one. And I saw the dirt, yeah, this is going to be good. And, but you know what I found myself doing? Three. Only three. Just three cookies. Close the package back and set it to the side. And I, and I didn't really realize it. I just develop control. I can drop. It's not, maybe for some, we must stop completely, maybe get away from it. But for some, it's about control, self-control. And that is what he taught me. And that's what I trusted him. Because I said, I had a problem with this. Help me with it. And I put it in his hand. And when he said, don't have one, I didn't like the answer at first. But I trusted him. And then I saw myself as self-control that instead of it taking me like an hour or one sitting to eat the whole package of cookies, it took me about a week that I ate the whole package. It took me almost a week. And then there's just been days later where I said, it's not in some made thought. You're depriving yourself of your favorite treat. Why? It's not the pride. It just, I don't have this desire. I don't need it. I don't, I feel I don't need it. I want it, but I don't need it. And right now, I don't want it. So I'm not going to get it. And I've been able to go on. And that can happen with you. 
All you have to do is take your problem, give it to him, ask him, help me with this, and leave it in his hand. Because you want to trust him, and he wants you to trust him. Otherwise, it could be out of this scripture, where it says in Isaiah 29, 13, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm paraphrasing, but I encourage you to go Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13, where it said that God speaks and said the people, they speak with their word, they honor me with their words and their lips, but their heart is far from me. And he said, and they're just so focused on tradition. As much as they're, he's explaining that they're talking about, you know, they're not keeping his commandment. They're not following him. They're saying that they believe and they love and they trust, but they're not showing it with their heart. They're just doing things. They're just pretending, so to say. And again, it repeats in the New Testament twice. Matthew chapter 15 verse 8 and Mark chapter 7 verse 6 where Jesus quotes Isaiah to the Pharisees saying, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you that their work, their lips they honor me with their lips, but their work is far from me, you know. So if you saying that you trust, show him you trust. Do as you say. Don't just say it. Do it. Mean it. I know it's going to be hard, and I know it's sometimes scarier with the outcome, but you know, at the end, it's going to benefit you. It's going to bring you blessing. It's going to bring you joy. And you're going to be happy. And I promise you on that one. As long as you trust him to do it. So keep those in mind. And I pray that you'll work on those things. And then if you have other questions. Please send me a comment. And hey if you know someone who can benefit from this video. Share it with them. Share it with your brothers and sisters. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Share it with the church. I just direct them here to this page, Brian Stocker, Motivate M4T, meaning Motivation for Transformation. And if you're watching this on YouTube, that same thing. Direct them to this channel and just subscribe to it, follow, and I'll be coming back with you with more videos. Again, if you have a question or any comment, please let me know. Send me an email, send me a text, send me anything. And I'm going to try my best to answer as soon as possible. And you guys have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you next time. See ya.